and uh, kind of want to make cook statement. You know what I mean? Why not enter a natural cook bodybuilding competition? And who gives a cook? I mean, I used to be at the Mr. Olympia level. I'm an IP pro. I competed on the Olympia stage three cook times. <laughs> Coach Greg, in today's video, I'm going to be responding to Jeff Seed, who seems to be calling me out. I mean, there's dozens of comments says, Greg Doucette, not going to like this one. Greg Doucette going to have a field day in this one. And I've already watched the video. And Jeff Seed is essentially trying to argue and make a statement saying he's a lifetime natural that he's never used anything in his entire life. And he's gonna try to defend him by showing video evidence of him at one point when he was younger and saying that he's much bigger now. The problem is he didn't show when he was at his biggest. And if you've watched the video, you'll see that Jeff Seed says the word cook more than I've said cookbook in my entire life. I pray for Greg's editor for having to beep out all the swearing. Deuce Head will have a hard time replacing the 100 times the F word with cookbook that Jeff said in this video. And so perhaps I'm getting under his skin. Just a little bit. But remember, this is the reality of what I do. Four years ago, I made a Natty or Not on Jeff C. And in that video, I described how he had amazing genetics, how he looked very aesthetics. But there was a time in his career of which I am almost 100% certain that he was not natural. And that time was in 2016 at the Mr. Olympia. He had explained how he'd gone on a bulk. He bulked up for two months and then cut down for two months. And in that time, he literally said that he trained five hours a day. When somebody is natural, do you think that they can train for five hours a day and recover from it and suddenly put on a ton of new muscle? If you compare his physique at previous Olympias to that Olympia, you're going to say, what the heck happened? How did he in fact look so good? And so it's debatable as to whether or not he used performance enhancing drugs before that competition, of which I would suggest that he did. Brief periods of time, perhaps for photo shoots. Those photo shoots are gonna take the photos that you're gonna see throughout the year. And so for the majority of career, he is in fact 100% natural. But when he was at his best, when he looked his fullest, his most aesthetic, the most pleasing physique at the pro level, I don't believe that this guy was natural. Jeff Seed, I'm a lifetime natty. Dr. Evil, right. Jeff is giving Greg free money at this point. And so one thing that I find very interesting is we're talking about Jeff Seed. Jeff Seed, at the time when I first recorded that Natty or Not, was the most requested video I'd ever done. It got over 2.2 million views. This guy was the epitome of a fitness model, the most fitness model at the time. But yet, four years later, nobody cares. And by nobody, I mean, there are a few thousand that do. 11 hours ago, he posted this video of which he has 1.35 million followers and only 24,000 people have viewed it. And so what does this mean? It means people don't care if people are natty or not. But I've already watched the video and Jeff does in fact have a great message. He wants people to be natural. Although I don't believe he's a lifetime natural, I do believe he was natural at the time of this competition. And so let's watch the video I'm gonna critique what he's saying. You know, I look at uh, the current state of bodybuilding and I I don't really wanna comment on the, the trajectory of where it's going and my opinion really doesn't matter. I actually think his opinion does matter as Jeff represents very aesthetic physique, one of the most aesthetic physiques of all time and what I think the standard should be. And so although I criticize him and say that I don't believe he was a lifetime natural, I do believe he has an amazing physique, one that should be at the IFBB pro level. However, the standards have gone too far. Jeff Seed, with his physique right now, most likely would rarely win an amateur competition. The majority of amateur competitors are much bigger than this, and why? Because they're using drugs. They're using steroids, SARMs, peptides, growth hormone, everything. Still been dieting hard, still been maintaining my physique, still look cook aesthetic, so I felt like why not go compete and uh, kind of want to make cook statement, you know what I mean? And so perhaps he has my cook cookbook. I mean, look at this guy's physique, it's incredible. But cook why not enter a natural cook bodybuilding competition? And who gives a cook? I mean, I used to be at the Mr. Olympia level. I'm an IP pro. I compete on the Olympia stage three cook times. But what the cook? I'm going to compete against naturals in a drug-free bodybuilding competition. Seeing a lot of guys that are commenting like, oh, but you did the Mr. Olympia eight years ago. And so he says, I see a lot of guys commenting. He literally sees me. 
I'm the one guy that still gives a shit about Jeff Seed. I comment on his videos. I'm giving him publicity. And yeah, I'm calling him out. I'm saying I don't believe he was natural back then. He's the youngest IPB pro of all time. And so you're gonna believe that there's an 18 year old who's 100% natural that's beating all the grown adults while on steroids while he's 100% natural. It is in fact very hard to believe. My first Mr. Olympia competition right here, my closing routine, and I'm gonna display my last competition that was a weekend ago. I'm that much smaller than I was back then. So what he does is he shows his first Olympia competition. When he was at his smallest, he chooses the competition where he looked his worst. And then he shows his competition right now. And if you're comparing him at his worst from 2014, not 2016 when he was at his biggest, and compare him to back then, he does in fact look better. And so by looking at that, you're thinking, hmm, Jeff does make a good point, but notice he didn't show what he looked like in 2016 a couple years later. And why do you think that is? Well, look at his physique in 2016. Look at him when he was at his best. Why didn't you show yourself at your best? Back in that competition, I was 172 pounds. This recent bodybuilding competition, natural tested bodybuilding competition, was 185 pounds. How do we know that? We don't see him stepping on a scale. We see no evidence of this. And so he could have made up any number. How do we know he's not 158 pounds? We have no idea what he weighs. Does anyone out there think that Jeff Seed is shredded to this extent and actually weighed 185 on stage? I don't believe it. Remember how many guys I've coached at this level? 185 pounds peeled to the bone natural would not look like this. He'd be far bigger. And so unless he has massive quads, of which he doesn't, Unless he has massive quads, there's no way this is representative of a physique that's 185 shredded to the bone dry on stage. I don't believe it. He's far smaller. So that's over 10 pounds of solid muscle that I gained throughout those over 10 years since I cook that competition. And so let's give you the benefit of the doubt. Let's say you are in fact 10 pounds of solid muscle bigger now than in 2014. Why were you bigger in 2016? What happened in 2016 that made you bigger than that? If you're 10 pounds bigger now than 2014 and you're bigger in 2016, what were you 20 pounds bigger in 2016? And so what happened from 2014 to 2016 that allowed you to put all that muscle and then lose it up till now? I mean, even compared to my stock Home pro physique to this recent competition when I did the Mr. Olympia 2016. It's like, dude, my physique really doesn't look much different. He's choosing a 2016 photo of not the Olympia, of where he's further away from the camera, unedited, compared to a highly sus, highly edited Photoshop photo of him right now and saying, look how much better I look. So what? I mean, I'm definitely not cook color. I don't know why I'm seeing people commenting saying that, oh, I'm so much smaller now. Come on, you guys. Like, I know people want to talk shit and all this, but let's be realistic. Jeff, there are photos of you looking absolutely incredible when you were young, when you were a teenager, far bigger than you are right now. You can't deny it. It's undeniable. Photos that were not edited. Photos that other people put up when you were in competition. They showed you as an amateur, for example. Compared to now, it's undeniable. You looked far bigger back then. I'm in the Mr. Olympia going against guys on Cook. See Alice? The Cook dick pill, bro. What the Cook? And so Jeff, perhaps a little uneducated on some of these things, what they can do. And so Cialis, it's increasing blood flow. It's you're getting more vascularity, more pumps and so on. And so yes, people are using these things. And Jeff is 100% correct. People are glorifying the use of steroids, these younger kids. I don't think it's so much the high level athletes. For example, I don't see Chris Bumstead or Derek Lunsford, the Mr. Olympia competitors, the champions, talking about their steroid cycles and promoting and glorifying it. I don't see them doing that. I see the younger athletes, the 18, 19, 20, 21, the younger athletes promoting and glorifying steroids, making it look cool. They're growing their followings by talking about how much trend they're on. We have guys like the trend twins with trend in their name, which inherently is going to promote trend use. When you see two guys that look incredible, very cool, very popular, very funny, very entertaining, and they have trend twins in their name, kids are gonna see that and think, well, if I use trend, maybe I can look like them. I got my pro status like three days after my my birthday so if you want to beat that record guys 19 years in three days it doesn't matter if you're 19 years 
in six months. I'm sorry, Brad, but you don't beat the record. So And so if you compare Jeff Feed's physique when he was amateur back then to now, he wouldn't be able to get a pro card. The standards have gotten so much higher, of which I'm 100% against. I'm with Jeff Seed in this. I think the standards have gotten ridiculous. I think they need to add another category, a category like the Jeff Seeds, guys like David Lade, guys who have less muscle that still look aesthetic that people want to look like, guys that perhaps possibly could get physiques like that while being 100% natural. Look at a guy like Antoine Antipov. I believe that's his name. I believe he turned pro at 19. Maybe he's 18. I could be mistaken. He perhaps possibly beat Jeff Seed's record, but look at the size in comparison. Does anyone think that that guy is natural? There's no way. It's astronomical the amount of muscle these guys are putting on. These guys competing in classic physique, it makes no sense. There's so much muscle. Now remember, there's nothing wrong with having various categories, but I do think that they need to have one category, at least one category, to cater to people who have, let's call it, natural looking physiques. Just because you're out there doing party drugs and you're cook smoking weed, or if you're like taking steroids, come on. Don't cook. talk about it. And so I agree with Jeff. If you're a very popular social media influencer, you're trying to be popular, and you're trying to glorify steroids, you have to understand that what message are you giving? If you're simply giving all of the good and none of the bad, that to me is glorifying steroids. You have guys like Noel Diesel who admit that they're not natural, but they're not glorifying it. They're talking about both the positive and the negative. And so someone like myself who's been open, honest, transparent about what I've done, I haven't just said all the good. I've said the negative side effects. If you use steroids, what are the bad things that can happen? If you only talk about the good and you don't talk about any of the bad, to me, that is glorifying steroids. That is when you're going too far. Don't be just cook. recommending steroids and getting these kids on cook. cycle and they're cooked themselves up. I mean, they're cooked little kids. And so when you're dancing around with syringes and needles and showing off and acting cool and saying you're on Cialis and promoting that in your videos, to me, this is not good. And I understand you're thinking, I ain't no role model. Yeah, you're not. But what you're doing is damaging thousands of young and impressionable athletes. These oftentimes are teenagers. And so ask yourself, is it really worth it? Do you really need to do this? Do you really need to send thousands of people down the wrong path? Look, if you're a natural bodybuilder, why are you doing these leagues against guys that are on cook steroids, all right? Duh, it doesn't make cook sense. And I understand, you want to test the waters, but at least do both. If you're so good as a natural athlete that you can compete and beat people who are on steroids, well, fine, do both. Compete in a natural organization, promote being natural, and 10 people look at the physique that I did while being natural. And yeah, it may not be as big, it may not be as lean as those other guys, but it's still cooking aesthetic. I almost feel like I wasted my time being a cook teenager going against grown ass men on steroids, it's just like, wow, yeah. And I was cook. eating them and shit and I'm, I'm natural. It's like, that's cool guys. And so imagine the pressure, Jeff sees a teenager going against grown ass men on steroids. Imagine the pressure. And imagine he gets to the pinnacle of the sport, the Olympia in 2016. You really think he's gonna then compete natural? He's in his early twenties. He's competing against grown adults that he knows are on steroids. He doesn't even understand they're on Cialis as well. And so what chance does he have? What is he gonna have to do? If he wants to be the best in the world, and who doesn't? When you're this good, imagine the temptation. If you're as good as Chris Bumstead and you're a natural, do you think the Chris Bumstead is gonna remain natural? Well, no, look at Chris Bumstead. Did Chris Bumstead remain natural? Chris Bumstead has ridiculous genetics. Chris Bumstead without a single steroid in his life would still look ridiculous. He would still be an IP pro, but is he natural? Is he natural? I don't think so. He admittedly says he's not. Why do you think that is? Because he wants to be the best. The pressure is out there. You want to be the best. And so if the competition, the organization allows the use of performance enhancing drugs, of course you're gonna do it. You really think the IPB is drug testing all their athletes? Of course not. But why not have one category where they do? Why not have one division where it's not size above everything? One category where you can compete while being 100% natural and win the competition. You won't have to be as big. A guy like Jeff Seed in his current physique right now, very aesthetic, and so why not have them promote his look? A look that's not based on size, but more on aesthetics. Having a good looking face, good looking hair, the chiseled doll line. Perhaps they're mewing harder than last time. They're looking freaking aesthetic. Have that as the standard not having size above all costs. Then you can have people who want to stay natural compete in that category and remain natural. Because if they did steroids, they'd be too big. 
Hey, you show up and you have too much muscle, you're getting marked down. We don't want all that muscle. We want aesthetic. If you want to gain muscle fast as cook, you want to have a more gradual process, it really doesn't matter. All right, we're doing the same shit. So let's not try to bring each other down. All right, we need to cook each other up. Well, I think it does actually matter. I think that people should try to stay natural as long as possible. But because on social media, we keep promoting the biggest and leanest and freakiest physiques at the youngest ages, people are now being tempted to use steroids at a much earlier age. Just think of it. When you swipe on social media and you're trying to see the best of the best, you're being shown the top 1% of the top 1%, the best of the best. Those athletes probably not natural. And so when you see the top 17, 18, 19 year olds, and you're thinking, I wanna look like that, I wanna be just like that, do you think that they're natural? Of course they're not. And so people don't want to gain muscle slowly, they wanna do it faster than last time. Now, if you are in fact natural, you wanna stay natural, why not use harder than last time supplements like creatine monohydrate, this is actually 50% off. We also have Turk Builder, Acti Builder, Geo2 Max, we have G-Test, we have protein powder, we have protein bars, we have everything. Head over to my website, code Greg, 15% off. The supplements, they really do work. Don't use steroids, use natural supplements instead. I just did a competition. I was tested. This federation I do, they do blood tests, they do urine tests, they do polygraph tests. I'm like, come on, you guys. And so what they actually did, they tested Jeff for his urine. They're gonna test for various steroids. I don't think they're gonna test for everything, but I do believe they're testing for the most part, most things. And I do believe he was natural for this competition. What does that mean? It means that at the time of the competition, I do believe he was natural. It's clearly not gonna detect if he used anything in 2016. It's not even gonna detect if he used anything three months ago. And remember, there are many performance enhancing drugs that you can use almost year round and pass. For example, testosterone suspension. It's suspended in water. Literally, it looks milky, it's white. <laughs> that can be used for 51 weeks straight. And if you stop a week before the competition, you're gonna pass. Or let's talk about Anivar, the number one most common choice for females. Most females, most, if you're getting actual Anivar, if you use it for 11 months and stop for one, you're probably going to pass. Probably passing after four weeks, perhaps six weeks at most. And so imagine this, you're on Anivar at any dose you want, 10, 20, 50, 100 freaking milligrams, so many milligrams that you're turning into a man. Use it for 10 months straight. You put on, as a female, 20 pounds of muscle. Let's call it 20. You then stop. You perhaps lose five of those pounds while you're off cycle and you compete. Still 15 pounds of muscle bigger. Do you really think that person's natural? They pass the drug test at the competition, but they're not really natural now, are they? And so just because you pass a drug test, it doesn't mean you're a lifetime natural athlete. And so unless they're testing you in the off season without any notice when you're not aware of it, so for example, they show up at your door two months before the competition, six weeks before the competition, and test you at that point, how do you know that they're actually natural? You don't. I want to mention one thing. Okay, if you want to come on my cook page, and talk about, oh, Jeff used to say that he was on steroids. It's like, come on, you guys. You know, this is Cook. like defamation when you're spreading lies like that. And so Jeff makes a good point. You can't believe everything you see on the internet just because somebody says he said this or he said that, they might be lying. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm giving you my opinion, my two cents rounded up to five. I don't believe he's a lifetime natural. I'm not saying I have proof. I'm saying I don't believe it. I gave you the evidence. I'm showing you in 2016. He's saying he is a lifetime natural. He's showing you when he was smaller in 2014. And so you can believe what you think. I do believe him right now. I believe he's natural. I do believe his message is great. I think he's trying to promote natural bodybuilding. I can see why he wouldn't have competed as an IFBB pro because he's at minimum 20, 30, maybe even 40 pounds undersized for competing as an IFBB pro in men's physique. And so although he looks incredible, if he competed as an IFBB pro, people would say, where's the muscle? And so to me, this is a shame. I think that the IFBB pro has gone too far in terms of the size of the men's physique competitors. I think they all look like bodybuilders with tiny waists. I would like to see a more aesthetic, more natural looking men's physique category. Look, I'm a cook. lifetime natural bodybuilder and I'm cook. proud of it, all right? A cook. I'll work anyone in the cook. whether you're on steroids, whether you're natural. I don't think that just because you say the word cook a lot of times, like 100 plus, it doesn't make you more believable. I don't know about that. He says he outworks anybody, whether they're natural, whether they're on steroids. I also don't believe it. I even think that myself, I think I train harder than Jeff Seed. Although he did say he trained for five hours a day back in 2016 when he bulked for two months and lost for two months and he put on all that muscle. 
I don't know, Jeff, do you actually train harder than everyone in the world? Do you train harder than Chris Bumstead, than Derek Lunsford, than every professional bodybuilder out there? You're the hardest worker in the room. Do you even train harder than The Rock? I'm going to argue that you do. The Rock, I've seen him train, didn't seem to train all that hard, although he says he's up at 4.30 and he's the hardest worker in the room. I was watching him doing those lunging bicycle leg press, and I was like, ah. And so I do think that Jeff C. trains harder than The Rock. I don't think he's pushing his limits beyond anything imaginable. I'm always going to be the hardest cook in there. And if I'm not, you better cook if we train together, all right? One thing I know he doesn't do is he doesn't post videos harder than last time. He's certainly not the hardest working YouTuber out out there. If he was, he would have far more than his current amount of followers. He would have far more videos and he'd have far more money. But well, he's living life. He's having fun. And perhaps he doesn't want to work that hard, although he says he's the hardest worker in the room. Congratulations to him on winning this natural men's physique competition, getting his pro card in a natural organization. Perhaps we'll see him compete in the future. Wishing him the best ending it here. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm. Don't forget to watch the top video. You can watch the bottom one after if you have time. You can get the cookbooks, the training books, the circle diet book, the supplements, H-E-L-T. Also, the tank tops and the hoodies, t-shirts and so on, the hard and last time clothing line. Get over to the website. Don't forget, it's code GREG, 15% off. Click the link in the description. And until next time, I am out.